with the help of nine Merlin engines located at the base of the rocket. Today, we will be attempting to recover uh, this first stage for the second time. And today, we'll be, we will be attempting to do that on our drone ship, which you see there. Of course, I still love you. It's currently stationed 350 nautical miles northeast of the Cape and about 200 nautical miles east of Charleston. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single engine called the Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC, and that ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites into an elliptical orbit above Earth's surface. After deployment, the Starlink satellites will use their onboard propulsion system to move up to their operational altitude of 550 kilometers. Falcon 9 has been loading propellant since T minus 35 minutes. As a reminder, we use a rocket grade kerosene or RP1 as our fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen or LOX as our oxidizer to power Falcon 9. Currently, RP1 and LOX loading are nearly complete on first and second stages. Um, LOX will continue to be topped off right until the last minutes of the countdown. The stack of 60 Starlink satellites is safely enclosed inside the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you see there, uh, the pointed cone at the very top of the rocket. This structure is what protects the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison those fairings, and the second stage will continue on its journey to orbit. We will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today using our recovery ships Ms. Tree and Ms. Chief. You can see live shots from there on your screen now. At approximately T plus 40 minutes, the team will perform a poll to confirm if we're all good to make a catch attempt today. Of course, weather plays a big factor in that, as well as telemetry from the fairings, such as altitude, position, and speed. Uh, we will be ending our webcast following the deployment of our Starlink satellites at about T plus 15 minutes, so we won't be able to bring you live coverage of the recovery attempt, so be sure to check our social accounts for updates on that. Looks like a pretty clear day there out at Cape Canaveral. Uh, so the, with that, the vehicle, the satellites, uh, the range all continue to look good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. So we're currently approaching the T minus six minute, six minute mark. Uh, a little update here about our beta testing and speed testing. Uh, the Starlink team is still in the beginning stages of our global space-based internet constellation but we are well into our first phase of testing with our private beta program, with plans to roll out a public beta later this year. For those who have shown interest in participating in our public beta by signing up at Starlink.com, be sure to stay tuned for details on that. As employees have been using Starlink, the Starlink team has been collecting latency statistics and performing standard speed tests of the system. This means that we're checking how fast data travels from the satellites to our customers and then back to the rest of the internet. Initial results have been good. Uh, they show super low latency and download speeds greater than 100 megabytes per second. That means our latency is low enough to play the fastest online video games. And our download speeds are fast enough to stream multiple HD movies at once and still have bandwidth to spare. But our network, of course, is uh, very much a work in progress. And over time, we will continue to add features to unlock the full capability of that network. We also have a bit of exciting news. Uh, recently, as the Starlink team completed a test of two satellites in orbit that are equipped with our inter-satellite links, which we call space lasers. With these space lasers, the Starlink satellites were able to transfer hundreds of gigabytes of data. Once these space lasers are fully deployed, Starlink will be one of the fastest options available to transfer data around the world. If you would like to receive updates on Starlink news and service availability in your area, be sure to visit Starlink.com. So we're currently at four minutes and 15 seconds until liftoff, and Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene of fuel and liquid oxygen. The first and second stage fuel loading is complete and liquid oxygen loading is still in progress. 
super chilled liquid oxygen, which like I mentioned earlier, is our propellant oxidizer, is what's creating those white clouds that you see right there. Uh, that occurs when that super chilled LOX is exposed to warmer ambient air. So completely normal. First stage should be finishing up prop loading at T minus three minutes and the second stage around T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will move into startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The F-19 continues to track no issues on the rocket. Weather is looking good and the range is green for launch. Strongway players close out. Stage one, locks load complete. There we just heard the call out that locks load is complete on first stage. Like I mentioned before, second stage continues to get topped off. Everything continues to look good for an on-time liftoff this morning. Stage two, locks load, close out. Locks loading on second stage is now complete. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with one million pounds of liquid kerosene and super chilled liquid oxygen. Ground gas close out is running. Falcon 9 is in startup. There we heard the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. The flight computers have taken over the launch sequence. First and second stages are now beginning to pressurize for launch. LD is go for launch. Stage 2, pressing for flight. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds, all systems are go for launch. Let's listen in to the final countdown and watch as Falcon 9 takes our Starlink Stage one satellites tanks for flight. to orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. Downrange. M1D performance is nominal. Successful liftoff for Falcon 9 from pad 39A power telemetry, nominal. at Kennedy Space Center. There we just heard that power and telemetry is nominal. Moments ago, we began to throttle the nine Merlin engines that you Not see. One. 
they're propelling the first stage through the atmosphere, we begin to throttle them down in preparation for Max Q, also known as the... Max Q. All right, there we are, the call out. The vehicle just went through the moment in which it experiences the greatest aerodynamic pressure. In about a minute, we're gonna have three events happening back to back. First will be main engine cutoff or MECO, where all nine M1D engines will shut down and slow the vehicle in preparation for event number two, stage separation. As the name indicates, this is where the first and second stages MVAC will separate. Uh, there we heard the call for MVAC engine chill, indicating that the second stage is preparing for that stage sep and ignition of MVAC. After stage separation, uh, stage one will start to make its way back to Earth for its landing on our drone ship, and stage two will continue its journey with, along with the third event, uh, SCS-1, or second engine start one, where MVAC will ignite and begin to propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. Expecting Miko in about 10 seconds. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. All right, on your screen there, we have visual confirmation of MVAC those three events. Started. MVAC is now ignited and beginning to develop that warm orange glow. The next event we have coming up is fairing deployment. Fairing separation confirmed. There on your screen, we now see those 60 Starlink satellites. Those fairings will make their way back to Earth as well. Like I mentioned before, uh, we won't be able to bring live coverage of the recovery attempt for those fairings as they'll be happening after we close our webcast. So be sure to check in on our social media accounts for updates on that. Second stage telemetry looks good. Everything is nominal there. Now, as it heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, first stage there on the left-hand side of your screen will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. There on the left-hand side of your screen, we see the first stage continuing to coast. After stage separation, uh, after main engine cutoff and stage separation. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. It actually continues on an upward trajectory. Its maximum height gets uh, about 132 kilometers. And right about now, it should, it should have reached its apogee and now beginning to make its descent, coasting using its grid fins. And Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Good call out there, indicating nominal trajectory. Everything's looking good for both the first and second stages. Like I mentioned before, first stage will be performing two burns, the first being the entry burn, where three of the M1D engines will reignite this helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. About two minutes later, the second stage will happen, or excuse me, the, the second burn will happen, and that is the landing burn. And this is where a single engine will reignite and bring the vehicle speed down rapidly as it prepares to land on our drone ship. Today's Landing attempt will be with the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, which is currently located 350 nautical miles northeast of the Cape.
the six the 60 Starlink satellites that we have on board today will be joining our constellation of nearly 700 already on orbit. Again, these satellites are designed to provide high speed, low latency internet to us Earthlings. This is especially useful in places where good internet is hard to access or impossible. Uh, so not only rural areas, but thinking about airplanes and ships uh, will also be able to Stage one receive FTS is saved. high speed, reliable internet. Stage one, entry burn startup. So there we have visual confirmation that the first of two burns, the entry burn, has begun. And this will last for about another five seconds. Stage one, entry burn, shutdown. All right, shutdown of those, again, that was performed with three, engine, three engines. Checking in on the second stage, everything continues to look nominal there. Trajectory is looking good. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. The next, event that we, the next event we have coming up in about 30 seconds is the first stage landing MVAC burn. throttling down. There we heard the call out for MVAC throttling down in preparation for second engine cutoff, which will happen just before T, mi T plus nine minutes. Terminal guidance. Stage one, landing burn, start up. All right, we heard the call out that the landing burn for stage one has begun. This will last about 20 seconds. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage one, landing leg deploy. All right, visual confirmation stage there. Stage one, landing confirmed that this booster has landed for a second time. There we see a live shot from our drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Of course, I still love you. Hear the clapping and celebration of some of our first shift technicians here in the building. <laughs> second stage continues to look good. Nominal orbital insertion. All right, and there we just heard the call out for good orbit for second stage. So at this point, stage two is going to coast in this orbit for just a few minutes. During this time, it will start to spin along its central axis, giving the Starlink satellites the momentum that they need to deploy and space themselves out over time after deployment. Expected so losses. No we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back at T plus 14 minutes and 15 Acquisition seconds. Acquisition of signal Stick with us.
expected, sig expected loss of a signal in Bermuda. Welcome back to our webcast for Starlink this morning. We had an on-time liftoff from Cape Canaveral and saw a successful landing by stage one made on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, out in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage has been coasting along uh, now as we are awaiting the deployment of these 60 Starlink satellites that you see stacked up there on your screen. So that deployment will be coming up here in about 10 seconds. Starlink deploy confirmed. There on your screen, we see the Starlink satellites have deployed and using the momentum that they got from the slight spin around uh, about rates. the central axis. What a beautiful sight. Shortly, these satellites will deploy their solar arrays, and over the next few days and weeks, they will distance themselves out from each other and use their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to operational orbit. And with that, we'll be bringing our webcast to a close. Thank you to the range and the FAA for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in getting future news about our Starlink service, head on over to starlink.com and sign up for updates. Follow our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. Until then, have a good one. <laughs>